Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we worship, I believe you're near. Praise God. As a matter of fact, the Bible lets us know that he dwells in the midst of the praises of his people when we begin to praise him. I'm having to adjust a minute being up here looking around. In the other sanctuary, you just had a good straight shot at everybody. Here, you got to have a scatter gun. You know, because it's just scattered pretty much around everywhere. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Good to, good to want to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank God. Good to be able to be in the house of the Lord tonight. This week, it's been really brought to my attention so much since yesterday. How quickly things can change in our life. When Brother Moore called yesterday, let me know about Brother Wright and the situation that he was in. Not even aware that he really had a major problem. And then all of a sudden, you hear that you've got about three days. But God's good. You know, I, I know that God is able to heal him. But if God does not, then the blessings of God are still manifest because it was so quick. And that God would put an end to it so quick without him having to, to suffer so much. But I did talk to him this afternoon. And he was getting ready to leave to come home, to bring him home. And I told him that, the church was praying for him. He had a lot of friends. He had a lot of people that was talking to the good Lord on his behalf. And so just remember to keep him in prayer. Praise God. Good to see everybody. Turn at your neighbor and smile. It don't matter if you like them or not. Smile at them. If it's your wife, you better smile. Praise God. I'm smiling, baby. Before I, I preach, let's just ask the Lord's blessings right now because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you be seated and I'm going to talk to you just a minute uh, before I start preaching. So let's just go ahead and ask God's blessings on the remainder of this service and the word of the Lord. Dear God, we need you tonight. Lord, we ask for you to touch our heart, touch us. Let your spirit move us, oh God. Lord, we need you tonight. I need you tonight, God. I need your touch. I need your help, oh God. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. God bless you. You can be seated. I will read some scripture, but you can go ahead and be seated. Uh, just a couple of short scripture from John chapter 4, and everybody's familiar with this particular chapter. It uh, deals with a, with a woman and the Lord. Thank the Lord. The Lord knew how to deal with the woman. But it, we want to share with you from the word of the Lord in just a couple of short scriptures, and then I want to talk to you. John chapter 4, verse 13 said, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But then he said, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now I want you to let your mind just kind of roam with me for just a moment. Uh, a little journey, not really make believe, but let our mind just kind of roam for just a minute. Imagine that you are crawling across a hot burning desert, scorched, near death. You're dying of thirst and close to perishing, but ahead of you, you see a sign that reads, cool, clear, life-giving water, only five miles ahead. You feel like You've got just a little bit of hope, a little bit of a chance that comes alive in you. It gives you a little bit of renewed energy. 
And so you continue your crawl across the hot burning sand of the desert. And you arrive at this place that you saw this sign beckoning you to. It's a magnificent building. Beautiful, radiant, shining. And the sign, the sign outside invites you to come in. You call, crawl through the entrance. And you're amazed at the beauty of the place. Then as you go through the door, you crawl through and you see that promised well. That's there and you see the bucket sitting on the shelf. You have just little strength left, so you crawl. And as excited as you can be in your condition, you take the bucket and you let it off down in the well, expecting to hear a splash as the bucket touched the water. But there was no splash. There was just the thud of a bucket hitting the bottom of the well. And in your mind, you probably thought, well, this is just an illusion. This has got to be. There's got to be water there. And so you draw the bucket up real quick. And as you pick up the bucket and begin to look, it's, it's just dust. It's dusty. Dust that cannot quench your thirst. As a matter of fact, it only deepens your thirst. And takes away all of the hope that you had built up in you. That kind of sounds far-fetched, don't it? We kind of think that's probably not going to happen, probably never going to happen to me, and maybe not. But this is the experience millions of people are going through in life today that's trying to satisfy the longing in their soul, searching for anything that they think can give them some hope and looking for hope. But what I want to really talk to you about, these people that are searching and these people that are looking, trying to find this something to satisfy that inner craving. Everywhere they turn to try to get a drink, and every time they begin to draw to think maybe this will be what satisfies me, they find that they're at a dry well and there's nothing there to satisfy. This is happening to millions of people in our society today, in our world today. And my prayer is God help me today to realize that there is a spiritual part of me that's got to have a spiritual feeling of God and a spirit of God that nothing else is going to be able to take care of. Oh, God, help me today. Finances, now, I, I, I'd like to have more money than I've got because my wife would really like for me to have more money than I have. And, but, you know, finances is not going to save me where I'm broke or where I'm rich. That's got nothing to do with my soul. That just has to do with the finances of things that I can buy or not buy. But my soul, the most important thing I have, God help me to realize today that if I'm going to feed this soul and I'm going to give this soul the thing it's thirsty for, I've got to feed it with the spiritual things and not the natural things of this world. Oh, God help us. You see... People are trying to feed their soul with finances or with alcohol or with drugs. And it just does not happen. That never quenches the thirst. As a matter of fact, it, you, you, you know, some people think, well, they can drown their troubles. But you don't drown your troubles. You just drown the reality of what's going on in your life. You don't really drown your problems. And you don't drown your trouble. Now, this scripture setting that I read these verses from, we're very familiar with. And everybody talks about, you know, the lady at the well, the woman at the well, and Jesus. 
But it starts off by letting us to know that when Jesus decided that he was going to have to go to Galilee, the Jews did not go through Samaria because of the lifestyle and the conditions that the Samaritans lived in. So they went around. But Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. What Jesus was saying is, I have a divine appointment in Samaria. I have a place that I must be. He took the shortcut. And racial or religious differences did not stop him. He just took the shortcut to get to where he was going. Now he was weary from his journey. But with him arriving where he was going to the well, there was a divine appointment about to take place. And, you know, we, we read about it in the Word of God in so many instances. When uh, people were looking for wives, for some reason or another, they went to wells. I guess it's because the women did the watering of the animals and the watering of the stock and the, and the watering of whatever. Somewhere somebody messed all that up. <laughs> that, that all got, got changed. But Jesus said on the well, now when, when Isaac needed a wife, Abraham sent his servant and sent him to a place in Nahar to wait by a well. And then all of a sudden, Rebecca showed up and she was carried back and become Isaac's wife. When Jacob ran from Esau, and fleeing for his life, he went to a well, and he sat on the well and talked to some folks, and all of a sudden, this beautiful girl, Rachel, showed up. And so you know the story from there. They wound up. He married Rachel. When Moses was fleeing from Pharaoh after he killed the Egyptian, out into the desert, he came to a well. And the priest of Midian's daughters came to water the flock. And the shepherds began to run away, but Moses defended them and watered their stock, and they carried him home with him, and he got a wife out of the deal. So be careful if you're going to hang around whales too long. But this was just seemingly the way it happened. Now, this Jewish boy, this young man, Jesus, was sitting on the well when this woman came. You know, and it, it's kind of odd that she came to Jacob's well. It was almost a mile out of town. And there was a well right in the middle of town. And I, I've heard folks say, well, she had such a bad reputation. She didn't want to be around nobody and nobody wanted her around. That's all speculation. Nobody really knows that. But I got a feeling I know why she went to Jacob's well. Because there was a divine appointment with the Lord. And nobody comes to the Lord except the Spirit draws them to come. And so when she went to Jacob's well, she went at the direction and the urging of the Spirit of God. Because God had something planned for her when she got there. God help us. Now... We know a lot of the story that's contained, you know, Jesus told her, you know, go get your husband. She said, I don't have one. That's right. You've had five, and you shacked up with another one now. Can you imagine what she felt like? Can you imagine in her mind, she said, now how in the world? Did this dude know so much about me and I've never seen him and he's never been here? How did he know so much about me? But eventually when it was all said and done, she went back into the city and said, Come see a man that has told me everything that I've done. Now, this woman was from Sychar. Sychar means alcoholic intoxication. Evidently, they like to party in Sychar. 
One thing they were intoxicated with was their own culture and their own ego and their own religion. And so Jesus looked at her and said, give me a drink. And I said, oh, you're a Jew asking me a Samaritan for a drink? Oh, no, that's not going to happen. That, that just don't, don't happen that way. Never going to happen. But when Jesus began to talk to her and said, you know, if I gave you this water, you'd thirst again. Whoever drinks of this water is not going to be satisfied. They're going to be drinking now, and after a while they're going to want some more, and after a while they're going to want some more, and after a while they're going to want some more. But if I can give you the water that I want to give you, you will never thirst again. What he is saying, there is a part of you that natural water cannot satisfy. There is a part of you that natural elements cannot satisfy. There is a part of you that only the Spirit of God can satisfy and nothing else can satisfy that particular part of you. It don't matter who gives you what. It don't matter how much to give you. Now, she's a woman without a name in this story. And I, I really thought about it for a long time. Why, why is she not named? I started to call calling some names, but I better don't do that. She's not named because she represents most of us. Our name could be where her name should have been. Not that we maybe have been married five times, God forbid. Four of them's too many anyway. But she represents us because all of her life she has tried to satisfy this inner part of her with natural feelings and with natural things and with relationships that did not last. Relationships that never satisfied that inner part. And so... She's at the place now that she's about to get some help and get some relief, but she's not named. She could have been me. She could have been you. She could have been any of us in this place. We're here today by the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the grace of God. And we're here because the Spirit of God has bid us to be here. You know, we say, well, I just decided I was going to church tonight. Well, that's good, and that's great, but I think there's more to it than that. I think there's a spirit involved in it that moves in your heart when you come to the house of God. It's not just because it's Wednesday. It's not just because it's Sunday. It's because there's something inside of here that says, I need a drink, and I've been trying to drink this week out of a dry well. I've tried to drink out of the things of this world world this week and it hadn't happened so I'm going to the house of God where there is living water that can flood my soul and fill me with the goodness and the glory of God hallelujah hallelujah you know Jesus declared in verse 14 whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst it does not mean that you won't want more of what you have. But it means that you know there's nothing different that's better than what you have. You just want more of what you have. Hallelujah. Uh, my, my dad was a guy that liked coconut. You could put, he said, if you put coconut in peas, it didn't make peas taste better. He loved coconut. Well, I... Maybe not quite that much. But I love the Spirit of God and I like to get up every day and know that when I wake up in the morning that I don't have to worry about a dry well because inside of me is a well of water that's springing up into everlasting life that the Lord put inside of me. So I'm not drinking from a dry well. I'm drinking from a live river that's flowing 
inside of me and so are you and you're here tonight because you don't want to rely on a dry well to get your strength and to get your spirit motivated you go where the presence of God is because that's where your spirit gets motivated and becomes alive oh God help us you know the man sitting on that well knew her story real well but let me also tell you this. That man sitting on the well tonight knows your story. As a matter of fact, better than you do. He could tell you things about you that you don't know. Or choose not to know. Whatever. When I was a teenager back a century ago. I remember we had, I was in my early teens and we had a drought that come through and of course everybody back where I lived, old country boy, had water wells that they dug by hand. There wasn't any drilling things back then to, to put the wells down. They dug them by hand. Big old holes in the ground, most of them 40 to 50 feet in the ground, hit a spring of water and the water level had begun to drop a little bit. And my daddy looked at me and said, son, you fixed to go down and clean out this well. I was not overly excited about getting in a hole just a little bit bigger than me and going down 50 feet in the ground on a rope. But I went, cleaned out the well, Got all the old sand that had filtered in, that was plugging, plugging the, the, the drain, all the water that was draining into the well from the soil, the little springs, cleaned it out. As a matter of fact, before I got it done real good, I had to call Daddy and say, send that rope back down here and get me out here. That water's coming in here faster than I can get the dirt out, and it's already up to about my shoulders, and I need to get out of here. So they let the rope down and I got out. But that wasn't the only. Then some neighbors were having problems. So guess who got volunteered to go clean out their well? And another neighbor and another neighbor and clean out the wells. But I, I, want, I want to say this. Those wells did not go dry. They were not going totally dry. But there had been enough trash and dirt filter into them that it was blocking the stream and the water could not flow into them the way it should. And the streams had to be cleaned out. The filth had to be taken out so the water could flow back into the wells. And I'm here to tell you there's somebody sitting on the well tonight and he's looking at me and he knows my situation. And he knows that I may have a little bit of stuff that is filtered into my well that may be blocking a little bit of the flow of the water, that may be blocking a little bit of what God would really like to do in my life. And he's really kind of nudged me today as I was over here and I was walking back and forth in here saying, God, please forgive me of anything, everything I could think of. God, I want my well clean. I, I want the flow of the spirit. I want the flow of the water. And I'm just sitting here or standing here tonight saying, if there's something that you feel that may be clogging your veins just a little bit where the well cannot get the full flow that it needs. You need to clean your well just a little bit. And you do that with a little prayer and a little dedication and a little searching and said, okay, God, I've got this problem and I need it taken care of. I've got this situation and I need it fixed. Clean out your well so the spirit can flow freely from within us. Oh, God, help us. Hallelujah. You might need to dig a little deeper. Well, Dad, that wasn't the only time he made me go down in the well. I had to go down again. And this time, I had to dig about three foot deeper in the well. Not that it would cause any more water to come in. But it would hold more water that did come in. 
So I had to go down. And I wasn't quite as big as then as I am now, but it's, the well was probably maybe 30 inches across. And I'd had to stand down it, and I'd fill a bucket up with dirt, and they'd, they'd draw that bucket up with water and mud splashing all back down, empty it and send it back down. And it took quite a while, especially to dig about three feet down in the bottom of that well. But when we finished, it had such a good supply of water that we could water everything in the house. We could water the yard. We could water uh, the garden. We could have the stock plenty of water to drink because it would contain much more water after we dug it out. And so what I'm saying also, maybe instead of just cleaning out enough to get a little bit of water, we might need to dig a little deeper sometime and let God know, God, I need a little bit more supply. My well needs to be a little deeper. I need a little bit more supply than what I've got. God, I want to dig deep enough that when it begins to fill up with water, that I've got more than I've ever had. Oh, help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, dear God. Help me, dear God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This woman went back into the city saying, come see a man that told me everything I've ever done. If this woman was the outcast that we sometimes make her out to be, would she have the nerve to go into the leaders of the city and say, come see a man that told me everything I've done. And would they have the confidence in her to be seen with her to go out there if she was the kind of woman that some folks want to make her out to be? And, and, and I mean, she was a bad woman. I'm not, I'm not defending that. But I'm saying she was living the lifestyle of her city. That's the reason they had confidence in her when she said, come see a man that's told me everything I've ever done. Come see a man that knows everything there is about me and has told me about myself. And they came, the city turned out, and Jesus had to stay and preach to them for a while. And I'm here to tell you tonight, God, help us. I don't want to be trying to satisfy a spiritual thirst with something that's not spiritual. I don't want to be trying to satisfy a spiritual need. It don't matter where I go or what I do or, or, or whatever. If it's trying to satisfy a spiritual need, it will never take care of it can't go enough places. I can't see enough sights. I can't do enough things. I can't vacation enough to feel a spiritual need. But I can say, okay, God, I'm going to dig my well. I'm going to clean out my well. And I want a pure flow of the spirit. I want a pure flow of the water. And let God do something inside of me that will make an everlasting difference in my life. I don't want to try to drink from a dry well. But it's around us everywhere we go. The Bible warns us about a day that there was going to be a famine of hearing the word of the Lord. 2021 is a pretty good example. 2020 was a good example. 2022, if it continues the way it looks like it's going to start, is another good example of a famine. But in the midst of the famine... If we know where the well of good water is, there's a place to drink that will satisfy all the longing and the emptiness that we have inside of us. And it's Jesus Christ, the man sitting on the well that knows your story. Wonder if we have the nerve to walk up to him and just ask him, hey, tell me my story. Would we say, tell me how it really is or tell me how I want to hear it? I'd like to hear, boy, you're doing great. You're doing good. You just probably couldn't do much better. Man, I mean, you're on the ball. You got it going. I'd love to hear that. 
But what I'd probably hear was, well, son, you're kind of dry. As a matter of fact, you need to get down in that well and do a little digging, do a little cleaning, and let that flow begin to get back to that point that you feel totally refreshed and totally renewed. Oh, help us, God. Hallelujah. Am I, am I making any sense or am I just rambling? Oh, God help us. God help us. I have tried the drinking out of the dry wells. I look back in my life in younger days and I'm so ashamed of what I was. I'm so ashamed of how I lived. I had one of the most praying mothers that anybody could ever have. Sometimes I, I, I think she prayed 24 hours a day sometimes. I know one thing. Every night I spent at her house, she prayed every night, I think. Because I don't care what time I woke up. She was in a white robe walking in that hall looking like a ghost coming toward me. <laughs> My wife will verify exactly what I'm saying. You could hear, oh, God, save my kids. Save my kids. I stand here tonight because of that kind of prayer. But I also stand here tonight because I know that if I want to live for God, I got to keep my well cleaned out enough that there's a flow of the Spirit of God that I can feel in my heart that lets me know, hey, today's okay. I may not feel like I did yesterday, or I may not feel like I did Sunday, but every day is not going to be Sunday. There will be a Monday, and there will be a Tuesday, and there will be a Wednesday, and there will be a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday. But thank God there's another Sunday coming if we just hang in there. Praise God. But I want there to be enough water in my well that on the driest days of my life spiritually, there's still enough water that I can dip into that well and get me a good spiritual drink and let the Holy Ghost replenish and resupply what I need from him. Hallelujah. Would you stand? God help us. Whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst. But that water will be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Sometimes it gets dry on the outside because of situations and circumstances that we're dealing with just being human. But thank God the inside, there's a fresh flow of the Spirit of God on the inside when we can turn to the inside for what the outside can't give us, we have that fresh water flowing on the inside. God help us. I don't, I don't, I don't know tonight how, I'm not trying to judge your flow. I'm not trying to judge your will. I realized early this morning, actually I realized yesterday that I need to clean out some clutter out of mine. So this morning, well, even last night when I went to bed, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to the church in the morning. I've got to get over to the church. And I walked in here early this morning, back and forth across here, and I said, oh, God, i got to get any filth out of my well. i got to get any trash out of my well. i got to have a flow, fresh flow of the water, God i got to have a fresh flow of that Spirit, God, that would keep me motivated, that would keep me going. That would... And I've learned, and, and you have too, the reason you're still here. You've learned that no matter how bad it is in the normal, that in the Spirit, you've got that flowing river inside that keeps you going when everything on the outside is trying to shut you down, it can't stop you because inside there's that river that's flowing, springing up 
into everlasting life. Praise God. If you are fortunate enough that you feel your well is completely clean and that there's no clutter anywhere around your well, sometimes it may just be clutter around the well that needs to be cleaned up, not necessarily in it. And if you feel your well is perfect and everything is totally in order and man it just couldn't be any better oh you're a blessed person but I doubt if it lasts long because life is set to challenge every one of us and to cause us to lose that something inside that keeps us motivated and keeps us going But if there's something that you feel inside of you that you just like to say, okay, God, I, I could use a little help here. I'm going to get down in this well and I'm going to start doing some digging. And as I dig this out, would you please take it and just discard it? As I hand it to you from in this well, as I hand it to you, God, and you're sitting on the well, would you just throw that stuff out? So it can't get back in my well. You see, if I dig it out and leave it laying around the edge, there's a good chance it'll drift back in there. I don't know how, how you feel, but if you'd like to just tell the Lord, God, help me clean out my well a little bit because I don't want to try to drink from a dry well. Could you just find your place and let him know that for a moment before you leave to go home tonight? God bless you. So good to see all of you in the house of the Lord tonight. God bless you.